listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Or am I Andy Bates? Maybe or it's AI. I? It could be. Aha. Uh-huh. We have, a, a, we have a great conversation ahead of us today. We are going to talk a little bit about AI, but we're also going to talk about people. Yes, we like people. We value people. So we're going to yes. talk about that as well in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the coffee hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. And Concordia University, Wisconsin <laughs> Ann Arbor has a great conference coming up this summer. We're going to learn more about that conference. First, we're going to chat with one of the speakers, the speaker of the conference, Dr. Robert Bart. He is Distinguished Professor of at Baylor University and Director of Discovery's Walter Bradley Center for Natural and Artificial Intelligence and author of Non-Computable You, What You Do, Artificial Intelligence Never Will. And I've been enjoying this audiobook. It's been mm-hmm. a delight just to read or to listen to. Dr. Marks, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you very much, Andy. It's great to be here. I'm curious what sparked your interest in design and in AI, artificial intelligence, that led to this career in research and academia. Well, it's just fascinating, the idea that a computer could could duplicate some of the aspects of human performance. And I've been doing artificial intelligence for, okay, this betrays my age now for, for three decades. And I, I wrote the book, Non-Computable You, because there is actually kind of a cult a, a, a AI church, which is developing out of artificial intelligence, all of these ideas that in the future, we're going to be subservient to artificial intelligence. We're going to be their pets and, and things of that sort. And there's really no foundation to it. It's just, it's just a matter of in the faith of those that belong to this, uh, this cult, if you will. So I wanted to write this book to push back on that and show that indeed there were things that humans can do that artificial intelligence will never do. What are the, some of the things that you've studied about AI, artificial intelligence, maybe some things that we don't, we, some things that we're, we're very aware that AI does in our culture, but what are some of the things that you've been able to study as places that AI exists that maybe we don't think about? Well, I tell you, artificial intelligence is just everywhere. I don't know if you're familiar with Joe Biden's recent executive order. His, his solution to the AI crisis is to put AI in every single organization within the federal government. But yeah, there's other places where it's applicable. AI itself is a tool. And the question is, is where do you apply this tool at? For example, I'm involved right now in application of AI to uh, spectrum issues. We're running out of the spectrum and in, in the sense that the demand is too great to allow the current way of doing things to continue. And therefore, there needs to be, there, there, there needs to be variations in the policy which AI, of which the spectrum is used. This is driven a lot by the increasing demand for streaming and for, for video and, and, and things of that sort. And so artificial intelligence is playing a role there because it used to be you had a certain frequency assigned to a certain task Now you have to jump from different frequency to different frequency, and that's a whole new kettle of fish. And we're looking at that and just got some very nice money from the DOD to look into that. So again, it's it's the applications of artificial intelligence, which are really important, remembering that artificial intelligence is a tool and nothing more. It's a tool. What is it? (laughs) And and so that means it's it's capable of being a resource, being used, what can it do? What are some of the most remarkable things you've seen AI do? Well, one of the most remarkable things is uh, an email that I got from one of my graduate students a couple of weeks ago where he had gone through some of the recordings that I have done and captured the flavor of my voice. And he was able then to take that software and give it some written prose, and it read those written prose just exactly like I talk. And I tell you, it was spooky. I played it for my wife and she says, oh my gosh, they're going to use this all over the place for the, for the upcoming election. And it's going to be all sorts of, of deep fakes. And we never consider that deep fakes can be used for voices, but indeed that's true too. Cause it sounded just like me. It was, it was a little bit spooky. So that's the latest thing. But I guess I would say in general that it's the latest thing that happens, which is the most impressive. And AI surrounds us all over the place. And we are, we, we are sequentially numbed by familiarity as we, uh, as we move forward in AI. I remember the first time I saw Alexa, I went, wow, this is incredible. Or 
Google Maps. I thought, this is astonishing. And now today it's with chat GPT and all these large language models and generative artificial intelligence. And you say, this is incredible. So something else is going to come down the pike and it's going to be incredible too. So it isn't necessarily that it's the, 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 that is the most fantastic thing that's ever happened. It's certainly the newest thing that's happened. And that's pretty exciting stuff. How is AI useful for the average person or the average business? What are some ways that it, it actually does help us out in a positive way? Oh, it, it's, it's really incredible. If, if anybody hasn't used it, I would suggest you go to just put in your browser chat GPT and you go to chat GPT and you get this incredible software. I used it recently. We had somebody move into one of our rental properties and I thought, you know, I, we, we've kind of, we, we, we need a renter's agreement. And so I said to chat GPT, write a renter's agreement and it wrote one and it was incredible. And I went back and I, I polished it a little bit, but I was able to use exactly what it did, what it, get, what it, what it gave me. In other cases, I, I do write a lot and I, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I'm not good in English. I'm kind of a clunky writer. And I wrote this one paragraph and I went back and I read it and I thought, oh my gosh, that is clunky. And so I went to chat GPT, chat GPT and I said, rewrite. And then I put in my prose and it rewrote it with a lot better technique than I use. It was really, you know, it was really amazing. So I think this is something that everybody can use. And I found out that people are not aware of it as, as I normally think that they should be. And so again, go to chat GPT and play around with it. It's, it's, it's astonishing. It will even write poems. I asked it to write a a poem about, I just got back from Billings, Montana. I said, write a limerick about Billings, Montana. And it wrote me a nice little limerick about Billings, Montana. It was, it's just astonishing stuff, right? In your book, Non-Computable You, you do a nice job of helping us understand what AI is, how it works, what its limitations are, and what it can do, what it can't do, those types of things. What, talking about, for example, Chat GPT, you've given us a good example. I, you know, I need a, a a renter's agreement. Create a renter's agreement or write a renter's agreement for me. Relatively simple instructions. Is it is it literally generating a renter's agreement, or is it doing something else? Oh, it's copying. <laughs> it's, it's exactly copying. Noam Chomsky called Chat GPT and generative artificial intelligence high tech plagiarism. And that is indeed what it is doing. In fact, right now, there's all sorts of lawsuits against these generative AI companies that, 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 that is coming out. Most recently, the biggest one that I know of is the New York Times suing OpenAI and ChatGPT for digital plagiarism. And then for image, image generation, uh, Getty Images, which you've probably seen this on the web. They have a picture and underneath they have Getty Images. They have millions of different images. And Midjourney, which is another AI company, came in and they, they, they were able to take all of these and use it to, to train their artificial intelligence. And so Getty Images is suing uh, Midjourney right now. And we also have a lot of famous authors, including John Grisham, the author of The Game of Thrones, for example. They're in this writer's guild and they're, they're suing they're suing these chat GPT sort of companies. And so, yeah, it, 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 so it's plagiarizing and it, 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 it has gathered at least chat GPT, the latest version has probably exhausted most of the, most of the written language in the English language. And it's really, it's really astonishing what it can do. They've literally run out of fuel to train their artificial intelligence. (laughs) That's incredible. To think about it in that way. <laughs> in, in thinking about the differences between AI, generative AI, and humans, I mean, obviously there's differences between the two, but in your, in your research and, and what you write about, what are some things that humans do that we can do that AI will never be able to do? Well, I will unpack this at, at the conference in mm-hmm. my talk there. And it's also unpacked in my book, Non-Computable You. But uh, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence will, first of all, I think, obviously not have some of the characteristics that we, that we humans can experience, such as love, empathy, compassion, and things of that sort. But even deeper, artificial intelligence will never understand what it's doing. 
It will never be creative. You have to you have to be careful about talking about such things because you have to define them before you talk about them. You have to define understanding. You have to define creativity. I do that. And it will never it will never have sentience. It will never have a sensu- sensual experience that we have in simple tasks like biting into a lemon. It will never experience the reaction that we have, the taste that we that we feel. And so those those are three things. For example, with the sentience, imagine a person that has been void of the sense of smell and taste since birth. And you're trying to duplicate in him the experience of biting into the lemon. Now you can you can explain to him the explosion of the juice in your mouth, the sourness of it, and the lemons are yellow, and you can make faces and all sorts of things, but will you ever be able to duplicate that within this person who has been void of the senses of smell and taste since birth? No, you won't be able to. Now, if you can't explain it to a person that's been void of those senses from from birth, how are you going to write a computer program to do that? Uh, you, so you, you simply can't. So, yeah, those are the three things that I think are kind of astonishing that AI will never do. It'll never understand, it'll never have sentience, and it will never be created. So for those of us who are fans of the movie WALL-E, you <laughs> yeah. just crushed everything. I love yes. WALL-E. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> but in, in all honesty, I mean, yes, the movie Wally is yes, it's adorable about it's a computer cute. that, that takes on real. human characteristics, but it's 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 not real, and that's just the <laughs> point. Like that, AI could cannot do the th- and, and cannot experience the things that humans experience. So, when it comes to business or leadership, and I know we're going to talk about this at the conference, what do you see AI? being capable of doing in leadership or in business or not being capable of doing it. You know, we see jobs that we're always fearful are going to be taken over by AI, that are going to be taken away from us by AI. What about when it comes to business or leadership? Well, I think that AI has already been disruptive to a degree. We no longer have many toll booth uh, collectors, right? It's all done automatically. We no longer have map makers. That's taken over by, by Google Maps. We no longer have brick and mortar stores, at least many of them. Sears has gone belly up, for example, because that's been taken over, not by AI, but, but by high technology. And we don't have travel agents anymore. So the question is, what are the jobs that are going to be taken over by artificial intelligence? And the ones that can be taken over by artificial intelligence are ones that can be summarized or described in step-by-step procedures. So if you do something which is repetitive and is a step-by-step procedure, your job is in danger of being taken over by artificial intelligence. However, if you have a job which, and I repeat this, that requires creativity, understanding, or sentience, that job is not going to be overtaken by artificial intelligence. Again, I get back to the idea that artificial intelligence is a tool. We see incredible applications of artificial intelligence in medicine, but they are tools for the doctor, and they are going to really, really enhance what we can do in medicine. So artificial intelligence, again, is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or evil, right? So all of these, all of these anticipated deep fakes in the upcoming elections are an example of evil use. So, yep, that's, that's where it's at. Yeah, the, the conference that we're going to talk about more right after the break, we're learning more about human-centered leadership in this time of artificial intelligence. What can people who attend this conference, what can they expect to learn from you at this conference? Well, one of the things we will demystify the hype associated with artificial intelligence, all of the stuff that AI is going to take over. We will expose the limitations of AI. We'll also discuss the fact that AI is going to be incredibly disruptive to our economy. It's you know, and, and this happens in technical revolutions. If if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, for example, that totally totally re- redid what 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 happened and how people lived back then. And we're going to see this disruption uh, with artificial intelligence. I think it remains to be seen the degree of this disruption. However, we're going to wrap up here in just a minute, but I want to mention that that in addition to non computable, you you've also written some other books. What are some of the other topics that that you've written on that you've researched and that you enjoy? Well, a lot of my books are nerdy. They have lots of equations yes. in them. 
Um, non-computable U doesn't have any equations in it. Stephen Hawking, when he was writing his book, A Brief History of Time, was told every equation that you put in the book will reduce the sales by a half. So, <laughs> and so none of my other books, uh, most of my other books have, have equations in them. Uh, a couple that don't, uh, one is the case for killer robots and the necessity of the United States to continue in the arms race because if history shows us anything, it's that technology wins wars. I mean, if you look back at World War II, it was the radar, it was the, I hate to say it, but the atomic bomb, the Norden bomb site, a number of high technology innovations at that time won the war. And this, unfortunately, is what has to continue. Artificial intelligence is smoke out of the bottle. You're not going to contain it. You're not going to do treaties because there's there's people that don't like treaties. So this arms race is going to continue. So the other book I wrote was A Case for Killer Robots, which kind of unpacks this argument. Well, you can learn more about what Dr. Marks has been studying and more about his books and what he'll be sharing about AI at the conference. If you stick around, we're going to talk about that conference in just a moment. Dr. Marks, Distinguished Professor at Baylor University, Director of Discovery's Walter Bradley Center for Natural and Artificial Intelligence, and author of Non-Computable You, What You Do, Artificial Intelligence Never Will. Dr. Marks, thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Thank you. It was a fun. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Joining us today, Dr. Elizabeth Bennett. She's Associate Professor and Director of the Master of Science in Leadership in the Hobbs School of Business at Concordia University, Wisconsin and Ann Arbor. Dr. Bennett, welcome to The Coffee Hour. Thank you for having me. We are excited to talk about this conference happening with Concordia University, Wisconsin and Ann Arbor. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the leadership conference and other opportunities to learn about leadership at Concordia University, Wisconsin and Ann Arbor. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. We have something for everybody between the the Leadership Conference, which is our latest endeavor to get cutting-edge content out to our thought leaders. These are business leaders as well as academics, faith workers. We really run the gamut of interdisciplinary leaders. We also have a number of different leadership program elements on the academic side, including certificate and master's of science and leadership and doctoral programs as well, depending on the level of the learner and um, where they're coming in. Our typical learner is going to be somebody who has maybe come from undergrad or another master's program who already has a technical foundation and is looking to develop people skills or what we call power skills. Uh, and that's where uh, this leadership conference is coming in. We really are looking around the corner and are trying to um, train our leaders to be looking strategically around the corner to see what's coming. And what's coming is that disruption that Dr. Mark spoke of. Um, a lot of job losses. Some are predicting up to 50% of the jobs we know are going to be gone in the next decade. And people are going to have to adjust and adapt. And that is a major leadership issue. So there are privileges and responsibilities that come with leading through this time since leaders set the direction for AI, how it will be used, if it will be used ethically, and also how they value people. Uh, and so this is where uh, Dr. Marks and I have, you know, we started talking and um, what he calls non computable you, which I just love. That's, that's what drew me into his work, is what I've written about as the ineffable human element. And it's from this perspective that there are things that people do that are creative, you know, having sudden insight, which is that aha moment. These are things that I just don't see technology being able to replace. You know, humans have an amazing capacity for creativity. So we want to make sure that there's a vision for the value of people while we integrate this technology. 
And so the different offerings that we have are really working towards that to provide that sort of space for networking and fellowship and discussion around how do we strategically use this tool? How does it become the environment of the workplace? Um, and, you know, where are areas that we um, ethically should not use it? Um, I've just come off uh, doing scholarship around leadership ethics and AI. And there are special areas that leaders need to attend to because leadership is relational. Leadership is about emotions. It's about motivation, inspiration. It's relational with people. And there are special ethical responsibilities around that that as well, especially where there is a power differential between people and their collaborators. So our program is really trying to get that word out and get that discussion going on all, all levels. Talk about more of the conference, why this conference would be valuable to leaders in businesses and, and organizations. Absolutely. So things always take a little while to um, get published and out uh, in academic circles. There's always a little bit of a lag in the best and neatest ideas. And we are looking to help leaders understand not how to replace people per se, not to automate just for automation's sake, um, but to augment work in a, you know, productivity and in a human way. And so this conference is going to be cutting edge uh, because we have Dr. Marx and we have other scholars and practitioners who are going to present different ideas and concepts around AI and around leadership. So this will be a place for that networking to share ideas and really find out what's on the cutting edge. And we have a vision for this conference. It's the inaugural conference. We have a vision for doing this every year. And the theme will change depending on what is cutting edge at the time. So it's just, it's a new way to be able to bring and draw in uh, business leaders, faith workers, scholars and academics all together to have a personable conversation in a personable setting. So we really are trying to focus in on how to share and inspire and forward to a bright future with AI. What are you looking forward to at this conference? What are some of the highlights at this conference? I know the destination is certainly one of them, yes. but <laughs> and, and certainly Dr. Marks, what are some of the highlights that you're looking forward to? Absolutely. Well, I have to say, I am so thrilled to have Dr. Marks. We're very, very fortunate to have him. I am looking forward to visiting the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island. It is historic and beautiful. You cannot take cars onto the island, so you have to be prepared to take you know, whatever you're taking to the conference by ferry. But that is a perfect setting to enjoy conversation and discussion, uh, almost a retreat like focus and and just really enjoy the beauty of the natural world as we talk about the integration of AI. And let me just mention, I, we've got a, a couple of interesting topics. I'll just mention two that are coming alongside uh, Dr. Marx's work. Um, but for example, we have use cases of AI in project management. That's going to be one of the topics of one of our sessions. There's also going to be some discussion around vocation, the, the doctrine of vocation and virtual leadership. Um, so those are just two of uh, things that we're going to be providing during the sessions. Sounds really interesting. A lot of reasons to show up and and learn in an absolutely beautiful setting. Mackinac Island is wonderful. So a lot of reason to go and learn. How can people learn more and register? What are those details people need to know if they want to attend? Sure, absolutely. I'll um, mention two uh, places they can go. First of all, the uh, conference itself is being run through our continuing education department. They do a fantastic job um, helping us plan this conference. Um, and so you can go to register at um, learn.cuw.edu. Uh, so you can just navigate to the conference from there. Just look for Ignite and Inspire Leadership Conference. Also, if anybody is interested in pursuing graduate work, whether it's certificates, masters, what have you, we also have information online, which is onlineinfo.cuw.edu, and it's cuwaa-ms-leadership, or you can just navigate with the search engine on the site. So if you remember cuw.edu, you can find both of these. Very good. And we can include that in our program notes today as well. If folks are looking for those links, they can uh, just follow us on the podcast and then get those links there as well. I don't know if we've mentioned the dates, May 8th through the 10th, correct? On Mackinac right. Island at the Grand Hotel. So we'll be heading what late spring to mm. Mackinac Island. It's going to be beautiful. Um, to talk about leadership, human-centered leadership in the time of AI. Fascinating topic. Looking forward to learning more from Dr. Marks as well. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Bennett, for sharing this information with us. Looking forward to a great conference. One last thing. What, when you get to the island, what's the first thing you're going to do when you get on Mackinac Island? If you're going to have to, you're going to have to walk, right? <laughs> or I love walking. I love walking. I think what I'm going to have to decide on before I take that ferry is whether I'm going to take a, a kayak with me. Yeah. Oh, because there, there would be launch sites. And I have a kayak that folds, that you can actually take apart six pieces that fold into your trunk. So I might just be able to get that on the ferry. So that might be part of my luggage. Wow. That would be super fun. Our guest today, Dr. Elizabeth Bennett, Associate Professor and Director of the Master of Science and Leadership in the Hobbs School of Business at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour today. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Showing support for KFUO is now easier than ever. You can sport a KFUO shirt, swag, or even socks by visiting our online store. Go to kfuo.org slash store and order high-quality KFUO-branded merch. You no longer need to wait for our annual share for a chance to show your KFUO spirit. Visually share and wear this ministry out in the world by checking out our selection. Every purchase helps to support our proclamation of Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Go to kfuo.org slash store.